the company is uh, coming up 40 years old. Um, we manufacture uh, from a 2,000 square meter plant. And uh, obviously what we do is windows and doors, exterior joinery. Um, and we do that all across the South and Central Otago. In the last uh, the 12 months preceding the commencement of this course, we um, experienced about 50% growth in the company. So when you do that and, and the staff um, numbers don't change significantly, you get a lot of speed wobbles. And to jump on board with what Clint um, and Scott have been able to help us with is, is just a perfect uh, opportunity. So um, we're still pushing a, a large bow wave of, of work, um, as I say, south and central Otago. Um, just put a couple of, of key jobs which have really helped with that growth. A lot of uh, large homes in, in Queenstown, which can be anything from 500 up to sort of a thousand square metres. So, so some pretty large uh, jobs. So, our case of change was to uh, eliminate waste and frustrations. Huge amount of frustrations when you have that amount of growth. Um, increase the productivity, accuracy, and, and profitability. Um, improve clarity and communication. Communication is obviously a, a huge part of it when you have um, that amount of work going on. So, and, and big one for, for me and probably my uh, my peers: um, job satisfaction and, and reducing stress. Consistent, high quality work. Um, production line, so that's what we want to um, to, to have as a, as a goal. Um, improve customer service and customer experience. And part of it, which, which we do tag on, uh, not as an afterthought, but health and safety as a, as a priority and wanting to make that easy. Program objective, um, improve, uh, introduce processes to improve efficiency, accuracy and productivity. So th this, is, this is the stuff that we use at the start of it of the program when we sort of set in stone what we wanted to do. Um, empowering staff, really important. There's the mug shots. <laughs> um, Paul's general manager, I'm a contracts manager, so sort of like a project manager in the sales role. Dan's factory foreman, and we've got team leaders like Ernie and, uh, and Brett who are here with us today. So value stream map, really interesting process. Put it up on the wall. Um, people outside of the course will look on and shake their head. But we did get a lot of, uh, we probably had 160 of these. Um, and a lot of them process uh, driven, like at the, at the start of the process. Um, we, not, not everyone contributed, there's always that. Some contribute more. Um, some really get the, the process right off the bat and others may put up things that aren't quite relevant. But, um, but it was all there to take down and, and put on spreadsheets. And, and that was actually the day that uh, Clint came for his second site visit to see the boards on the wall fully populated. So didn't quite get there, but we did actually get them populated uh, prior to today. Wow. So that's the, that's the central board. Um, it was pretty sharp. <laughs> Still a few people looking at it shaking their head within the company. but. Um, it's, yeah, it'll be great to help us uh, drive where we need to go. Okay, so the um, milestone, um, process milestones are something we're going to probably put into a, a, a Salesforce CRM that we're, that we're starting up shortly. Um, <coughs> and they will sit within each job and we'll be able to uh, mark off what's required and make sure that everything has been done as is appropriate. So, just a close-up of our process map. Pretty straightforward compared to um, Bit South. I mean, it's just a, it's a standard production line, um, quite linear, as we say. Five-year site plan. Just a bit of a floor plan of the business. Um, we started in area one, which is a, a product coming from the door here, and it's all the cutting and machining. So a really large area, as Clint said. Um, and that's our rollout plan. So, getting into, um, I guess we, we started, it's quite a big area, but we started in that area because it's the most logical. It's the, the product comes in the door, and that's really going to, you know, set and drive the, the, the 5S process through the factory. 5S pilot uh, area, um, the 
day Clint came, he gave us an order a little bit higher than what we gave ourselves the day before, so that was nice. Um, so before and after, so large area, CNC machine, um, here, twin miter saws, drop saws, punches, um, quite a few different um, processes going on in here. Now these pictures were a bit dodgy, I'm afraid. I tried to redo them this morning and they ended up so sort of compressing weirdly again, but cleaning station, um, some visual aids for um, <coughs> working out issues with product that comes in, uh, in the door. Um, some good sorting here with, with tooling for the, for the CNC. Um, some smarter setting of, of, um, of, of tools here and a nice shiny clean CNC. Challenges for us uh, has been time. I mean, I couldn't mention this morning that you've really got to uh, to take that wasted time back, but we've found it really difficult with the large bow wave of work that we've got in, in front of us. Um, change can take longer than, than hopeful. Um, there's no quick fix, but it, it is a, it's the blueprint for, for what we need to be doing um, ongoing. Um, getting staff not part of the course to, to grasp the thinking behind Lean. Um, it'd be nice to do a, a, a one-off sort of small session with Clint as he, as he talked about this morning. You're giving staff a voice, great benefit, cleaner work areas, just eliminating all those frustrations, hopefully. And uh, we found out, like, like most people do, that most of the problems are process driven. The opportunities and, uh, and future benefits, so higher quality product, less we work, increased workflow, satisfy the customer, which is very high goal and it creates a platform for future growth. So we've done that 50% in the last sort of 18 months and, uh, and hopefully you know, we can bed that in and then go even bigger. Um, improving efficiencies and therefore competitiveness in the marketplace. So um, we've enjoyed being involved. I want to thank Clint. He's, uh, his lean philosophy is pretty infectious. He's passionate about what he does. Um, so thanks for your expertise. Uh, and to Scott. Uh, he really drove it to, to get us on board, a um, bit of cajoling, um, talking to my father. Uh, he does a great job at, at, at getting us stimulated to want to come on board and, uh, and all the best with um, your future endeavours. And yeah, thanks to Venture South and too, we do get in behind and, and support this um, as well. Um, I love hearing about growth in organisations. Steve spoke about it this morning. You know, what we want done in Southland and in New Zealand for that matter is organisations that are going to grow. We want them to grow, we want to increase our, the economic benefit to the region, to the country, provide job stability for the future. But with growth comes a lot of challenges. And uh, sadly in New Zealand, and this is very much a, a bit of a problem that I find in all my work, and obviously I come from um, Europe and uh, Japan, where, where we talk about companies in terms of thousands of staff. Here in New Zealand, if you've got more than 10 staff, you're a big business. So, the problem with New Zealand is we have a huge dominance of small to medium sized companies. Not a problem unless they're prepared or can grow. But with growth comes a few problems. What we don't understand often is that organizational growth um, happens in three stages. Mom and pop start a company, stage one, people led or owner led. Sorry, that's owner led. And owner starts a company, they lead the organization. We employ 10, 15, even 20 people, and we have to become people-led. This is often where people become the process, and this is where inconsistency can come into your business. But believe it or not, the vast majority of New Zealand businesses are still people-led. They rely on individuals to get the job done. Smart individuals, but very inefficient and a lot of inconsistency. This program, takes organizations to that third level of maturity. It's called process-led. The organization needs to be driven by process, thereby delivering consistency and efficiency. Matt spoke about the pains. I can tell you the magic number, and this is where most companies feel the pain. The magic number has been 30 and 50 FTE, full-time equivalent people. Organizations that have less than 30 staff can just about survive being people-led. But once you get into that danger zone, 50, 30 to 50 people, if you do not have process, 
you potentially are going to implode. So what you find in New Zealand, so many organizations get to that ceiling and they stop. They just can't grow anymore. And I think mistakenly we've called it the three B scenario. The beam of the batch, the boat. The owner has finally achieved the beam of the batch and the boat and he thinks I want to stop. The problem is he can't grow. Something is stopping him. And I love what Matt said. Matt said this program provides the forum and foundation for growth. Why? We're not going to grow on people. Yes, we'll employ people, but the business will grow around process. That is how we need to grow our organizations. We need to have good processes in place so that we do grow. We're not just adding complexity and variability. We're building it on core efficiency and process. Awesome. Very, very quickly, the other thing I'll mention to you, 5S, that wonderful tool you'll see more about is all about the workplace. What Matt showed you is a strategic implementation plan. For 5S to work like anything, we need to do it piece by piece, and, and that's what Matt explained. Beautiful floor plan of the factory, piece by piece, and for most companies of that medium size who we have through this program, we need to get our heads around the fact it's going to take anything from a year to 18 months to truly drive 5S throughout your business. It's not a weekend activity, guys. So just enforcing the fact that Lean is an ongoing journey of improvement.